Top of the morning to you guys. My name's Cranberry Jackson. Hey guys, my name is Thomas Brush. I'm the creator of this game called Never Song, and I want to play it for you right now. The coolest part is I'm going to play it. I'm going to talk about how I made it, and I'm going to play it in the Unity editor. And Unity is the tool that tons, millions of game devs out there use to make games. So I'm going to play it in Unity editor, and we're going to open it up and unwrap it as I play the game. I think that's a pretty cool idea. Um, all I ask from you is if you guys could please, please, for the love of everything holy, <laughs> wishlist never song. Click the link below. We're at like 20,000 wishlists right now. I'm trying to get 50,000 by May 20th, which is like in a week. Guys, if it's past May 20th, then just go ahead and check out the game if you want. Otherwise, just watch me play the game. Let's go. Let's have some fun. Bye. Oh. Um. Oh, this illustration was actually done by Pete Cooper, this one sketch here. So he he did the actual um, storybook. You'll see him in a second when we start playing the game. Storybook illustrations and Pete Cooper. Um, I don't know who he's with now, but he has worked with Riot and also Blizzard. And he did these illustrations pro bono. I don't know why, but he was a nice guy. So uh, feel free in the comments to say thank you, Pete. And thank you, Eric because those guys helped make this game happen. All right, so this is the main menu. Let's just break it down really quick. This is what it looks like in the scene view. Pretty cool. We got a particle effect coming down. These are actually 3D leaves, and they're sort of just going past the screen here. We've also got this background image. We've got all of the UI elements, um, and they, they look like they're in 3D space. I think they actually are. Sometimes they're not. Um, but in this case, I think they are because I wanted the them to get yeah They get, see that glow effect in order to achieve that it uses a screen space overlay Method all being controlled by the animator controller here Which I don't even want to explain my goodness <laughs> So let's just hit play and get started. Let's maximize and Let's start a new game you guys ready? Oh man, I hope this works. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. I haven't played this game in the editor in probably two years. So. Knock on wood. No, that's fingers crossed. <laughs> Let's go. Oh no! Okay, good. We're loading up. Okay, okay, I think it's loading still. Okay, good. That's my daughter, Liv. Never Song is a moving story of loss and hope. It contains themes including traumatic death that some may find emotionally upsetting. To those who suffer, know that you're not alone. Please ask for help. So this is actually... Once oh, upon sorry. a time, Go ahead. there sorry. was a boy, an orphan without a single toy. His name was Pete. His world was gray. Until he found a friend one day. It was no normal friend he'd found. She was but the prettiest girl in town. From that day on, the summer bore adventures every single morn. Her name was Wren, so young and gay. She even had a small piano she'd play. From sharps and flats to middle C, she taught Pete to play and read. But on one fateful evening day, when looking for some place to play, Pete and Wren stumbled through a door onto an abandoned asylum floor. So you can see that the level's loaded the already. A face of white snatched poor Wren out of sight. Pete was not like Wren at all. He was timid, scared, and small. And this was his last farewell for Pete, Pete into, into a coma. coma. Farewell. So as you can see guys, everything is already loaded. All that was was a video overlaid on top of what was already loaded. In this case, the fade out occurs and now I'm sleeping, but it was already uh, 
loaded and ready to go. Okay, so a little bit about that introduction. Again, illustrations are by Pete Cooper. Pro bono illustrations. Those things would have cost me easily 40000 Because this guy is a Blizzard veteran. He's also a veteran, like a real veteran, which is awesome. Um, I don't know why, but I tend to work with people in the military, or who have been in the military. Hector is my producer. He's um, a, a military guy, and then also Pete Cooper. So thank you for your service, guys. Um, and also thanks for serving me. This video is brought to you by Corn World. Visit Corn. Okay, let's get started here. Let's maximize on play here. Sorry, my hands, I'm like crossed over because I'm using my right hand to use the mouse uh, on the left side of my body because it's plugged into the computer because it's got a small USB cord. <laughs> so let's uh, get moving here. I can show you really quickly what this scene looks like. Um, but let me just play a little bit. I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing me ramble. <gasps> Okay, so this is the very first tutorial of the game. Two space bars. We had to get that image, the two space bars. Those have to switch out based on whatever the device is. Um, from mobile all the way over to like Xbox controllers, we had to get them to switch out. So uh, let's hit, and same is true with the icons here, this E icon. Check voicemail. Apparently these old phones had voicemail. <laughs> That's a sexy voice. That's actually my wife. I told her, I said, honey, I need I need voice acting and I can't pay someone to do it. Can you come over here and voice act for me? A gay by a gay a game by Serenity Forge and Atmos Games. Hmm. So these curtains are not actually programmed, they're not actually 3D cloth. They're three different layers of a uh, a PNG and each one is skewing. Um, and it's done in Spine 2D. Hmm. <sighs> so those elevators were sort of created at the last minute, um, developed by Eric Coburn. Again, thank you, Eric. Basically, me and my brother played the game. My brother is my biggest advisor when it comes to game mechanics. His name is Steve. And the original elevators were really confusing. And he told me they needed some kind of indicator lights to tell the player that they need to jump twice. So I, I had to scramble to get that done. Okay, what's this? A portrait. The word smile is scratched into the parchment. Hmm. So all of these text boxes here had to be localized. So we had to hire a localization company to translate to 14 different languages. So every single thing that you look at in the game is going to have a, a text file or in this case, an ex, ex, Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file that has all of the different languages associated with this one portrait. And there, these kind of interactive elements are all over the place in the game. Hmm. Whoa! <gasps> what? Who are you? Who are you? Get out of here, you creep. Let me show you really quickly, guys, um, what this scene looks like in scene view. As you can see, we got plenty of errors, and those are being thrown even for a launchable game. Launchable on Steam and Xbox and... Well, actually, we don't know if it's going to launch on Xbox, but so there's our little guy here. This is actually a spine character. You can see his bones. Let's see if I can double click on him. There we go. So there he is. Um, his face looks 3D, but it's not. It's just his mouth is skewing. But I guess in, in the future, now that I know 3D, um, I could probably do that. But guys, this game is in not actually being, this is a perspective mode that you're seeing that P-E-R-S-P, -E that's perspective mode in the editor. So it's giving that parallax feel. Everything looks like it's 3D. Kind of like Paper Mario. Paper Mario is 2D, but it's also in perspective mode. The game is actually in orthographic mode, which means that if I move the camera, there's no parallaxing occurring. The parallaxing is fake in this game. So let me show you really quick. This is the game view. And this is the scene view. This is the editor, 
This is what the player sees. If I run, look what happens. There's a parallaxing that's being faked. Things are moving based on the, posi the Z position away from the camera. Um, let's see if I can get a better view. Let's see, let's go over here. So you can see the background is actually moving faster than the foreground, which is odd. It's almost an inverse effect, but when you actually look at the camera here, you will notice. If you look at the camera here, it looks like it's in a 3D world, or a better way to put it is like a, a 2.5D world. And that's all just basically a for loop, or yeah, it's, it's looping through all of the elements in this scene, finding its Z-axis position, Z-axis position, and, sorry, my mouse. <laughs> finding the Z-axis Z -axis position of various elements and moving them horizontally based on the camera. Pretty cool. Eric did that. Eric is really smart, so he figured that out. All right, let's just get through this level. I'm getting bored. S. Remember a smile was carved into the parchment? Okay. Who are these creepy adults? What is going on? Believe. The. Mm. Get out of here, you creep. What? SM. Whoa. I. L. E. Whoa. <gasps> Creepy face. Um, obviously, guys, I'm going to pretend like I'm surprised by all. Of, I've played this game a thousand times or more. I'm not even kidding. Um, so I'm going to act surprised because that's what Let's Players should do, right? <laughs> um, OK, let's get moving. So that was creepy. What? Never saw. That's a pretty good intro, Thomas. You did a good job. Thank you. Hopefully we're gonna get this first scene to load. What do you guys think? Is it gonna work? Crossing fingers. Knocking on wood. Yay! Believe it or not, getting Pete to wake up in that position was so hard. I don't know why. We had him appearing like on top of the piano and then falling through the piano. And then he would like snap into position and then lay back down. That was like two years of that. So I think my mouse is good to done charging. Okay, so let's get started guys. So that was a dream apparently. Let's zoom in here just a little bit. There you go. Okay. Hmm. The progress was saved. All right, we got a pretty little fireplace. That's cozy. Whoops. There we go. This was actually one of the last things I added to this game. We needed a fireplace to save the game. Booty Bum Pals, 1952. It says, best friends. Aww. So that looks like my main character, a little Pete here, and a girl. That's Ren from the uh, cutscene, okay. Aww. So interactable <laughs> objects like this, guys, are gonna really help your game be successful. <laughs> Even just bouncing on things. <laughs> or being able to run through grass and see it shake. Just adds a little tiny touch, makes you feel like you're part of the world. What does this say? Your dusty mattress. Examine. Friends' parents are so nice. Sleeping here beats the old orphanage cot any day. Aww, so I'm in Ren's house. She's gone. 
she got kidnapped by that creepy guy. Let's go. Oh. How beautiful. Again, I'm pretending like I've played this game. I haven't played this game. This is a cool game. Wow, this is so pretty. Redwind Village. You guys want to see what this looks like in the editor? All right, let's do it. Where is it? Are you anywhere? There we go. I think I found it. There it is. <laughs> so I'm literally God right now looking down on this village. Let's zoom on in. So the camera's way back there. Um, okay, so I got to double click on something here. There we go. Now we can focus on it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, there we go. You think this is how God looks at the world? He just zooms in with his mouse. All right. So here is something I wanted to show you. We have these little vines here, and these are just linked together with a custom... Let's turn the volume down a little bit. With a custom uh, script from Eric. So he made these cool little vines, so if I jump into them, let's see if I can... There we go. They wiggle and bounce. This isn't actually Unity's physics system, this is all custom from Eric. And you can see all the ray casts coming out of the character and the, the different hitboxes that are generated custom from Eric's script. Turn it down just a little bit more here. There we go. Okay, so this is how the world looks in the editor. Ton of layers here. This background is actually being used over and over and over again in this scene. So we're in this little red screen box here. That's what we're calling them, screen boxes. And as we make our way, well, let me show you, as we make our way through the world, it just pops into place over here. So this whole other set of graphics is activated. All right, let's play. Looks like we got some craziness going on here. Kids are boarding up the buildings and spray painting the walls. 1001, 1002, 1003. Hey. Oh, crap, not another interruption. I'm in the middle of jumping to a billion, Pete. What? I told myself I need to jump to a billion 550. It will make me feel amazing. <laughs> I think you're, uh, you got, you got something wrong in your head, bud. Um, same reason growing my hair out to 1.73 meters will make me feel like a god. Okay, why is that? The therapist asked me the same stupid questions. Mind your own business, dude. <laughs> so, can I Sorry. help you? 1,050, 1,016, 1,017. Where's Ren? Considering you're the reason everyone's parents have been missing all summer, I'd keep questions like that on the down low. How so? I mean, you fainted in terror as Ren was kidnapped. So the grown-ups went to Black Fork Asylum to try and find her. Jeez. They haven't been back since. Sorry. It's all right, buddy. Just be careful asking stupid questions. I, for one, am about to head out to look for my dad because of you. Okay, okay. After I finish counting, of course. Okay, John. That was a good chat. Thanks for being so encouraging. All right, so let's m move on here. What's this? It's locked with some kind of gemstone padlock. The music was written by myself um, using Logic Pro and my Casio PX100 or 200 uh, weighted keyboard. Plug it into Logic Pro, and then you can have all kinds of instruments playing. All right, let's see, what's in here? It's a barbershop of some kind. Redwind Barbershop. A message is scribbled on the mirror. CGCGB. Remember our song, Pete? Ren. How did this get here?
Red Wind Sonata, a love song scribbled on the mirror. Bum 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 bum. Hmm, probably need to use that in the future, don't you think? Man, what a cool, cool game mechanic, Thomas. That's so unique. Did you come up with that on your own? No, I stole it from Ocarina of Time. <laughs> we all know that. All right, let's uh, see what this little dude here is. Pete, you're finally awake. My What's up? Is full. I was about to adventure out to the Spidarian sewer to look for the grown-ups. I'll admit, my tummy is filled with little butterflies. Anyways, I think a grown-up might be down there. I heard screaming. E. Where's Ren, buddy? Golly, you don't want to know what I think, my curious friend. If you must know, it is my belief that, well, um, what? That your girlfriend is likely dead. Jeez. Uh oh. oh my heart skips a beat just thinking the dreadful thought. Epilepsy hasn't been great lately, Pete. Without her medication, Epilepsy. I'm not sure how huh. she'll last. <laughs> I laugh because I think about the voice actresses and actors, and me tell like I'll send them this script, and I won't really tell them anything, and they just read it perfectly, knowing kind of what I was getting at with epilepsy, being a five-year-old trying to understand how to say ep epilepsy. <laughs> I just think it's funny. All right. Help me? I'd help you find her, but I gotta go check out the Spidarian sewer first. Okay, okay. Bye bye. All right. Let's break this. And I'll break down the dialogue system in a future episode. Um, and be sure, guys, if you're still watching, thanks, thanks for watching. Um, please just wish list this game. Click the link below, and that would really mean a lot to me if you wish list. It's coming out on May 20th, 2020. If it's already launched, hey, go check it out. No, come on. So all that is for the, the pots is just two animations, one to the left, one to the right. You can do it in both directions. If you do it twice, it's gonna do it a break animation. So no real physics there, it's all animation. Okay, so we learned a song. Let's go to the piano here. Alrighty, Ren's house. Let's play that song we just learned. So believe it or not guys, the pause menu was probably one of the hardest things about making this game. Lots of elements here in the pause menu. We can try and show it to you really quickly here. I'm not sure if we can see it here. There it is. So there's just a lot going on, a lot of different elements in this pause menu. Let's drag the game menu over or the game over here and see what happens. Um, oh, it's paused. That's why. Yeah. So you can see there things are sort of animating in and out. It's no, 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 no. There we go. So there's things animating over and disappearing. It's hard to see the complexity because everything's being disabled. But there are a lot of different elements that are hidden right now. Um, and I'm trying to think, is there a way to show you? I think there is. Oh, hold on. There it is. Here's the pause menu. <laughs> this is going to get really, really nauseating really fast. Um, look at all these card sets. It's just, oh my goodness. This is the home menu with all the selection buttons. There's the options. It's just a big, huge nightmare. And so, you know, people wonder why, why does it cost half a million dollars to make a game? How does it, why does it cost some companies, you know, 50 million or whatever? <laughs> it's because there's a lot being managed and a lot that can go wrong. Um, even with something as simple, quote unquote, as a pause menu. There's just a lot going on here. All right. Let's uh let's play that song we just learned. CG CGB. Okay. So I type CG C G B. <gasps> what? 
That sound effect is my favorite sound effect in the game. That little snapping sound when a door closes. All right, here we go. Ooh, Redwind Slugger, Wren's vintage baseball bat with a cracking leather grip. This thing aches for a good whacking. Okay. So there's something to learn there, guys. Anytime you give a player an item, even if it's as simple as swinging a bat around, you want it to feel special. So give them a big old explosion, like a cool sound effect, maybe even some applause, right? And some sparkles and flash the screen. Make them feel really special. And we do that a lot of times in this game, even when you're giving the player something that is intangible, you're making it tangible. Okay. Oh yeah. So reward the player when you give them something. Here's the reward. Being able to break things. That's all it, all the player needs. Just a simple reward. That's a reward right there. I can break a lantern or a lamppost. <laughs> it's that simple. All right. Sorry, I keep whistling. I just really like this song. All right. So I guess we couldn't leave without the bat, so now we can get out. Classic Zelda mechanic. Can't leave the village until you get the sword. All right, I hope it loads. The Glitter Center in Kansas City is giving all of its residents free glitter for five years. I thought that was pretty fun. We're gonna stop right here. We're gonna do another episode soon. Probably in the description, maybe. You know what's also in the description? Wishlisting. Wishlist Never Song. Give it a shot. It would really mean a lot to me. Um, I can't talk. <laughs> We're gonna try and hit 50,000 wishlists by launch day, which is May 20th. Man, I'm gonna cross my fingers, knock on the wood, and give a good old fashioned prayer and hope we hit 50,000 wishlists. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. More episodes coming soon. Bye. Talk to you later. See ya. Have fun. Give it a shot. Have a good time. Happy birthday.